What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchPresentals.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can use a Photoshop plugin to bring Nano Banana photo editing to Photoshop. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember last week, we talked about how you can take an image of a SketchUp model, upload it into Nano Banana in Google's AI Studio, and then you can give it different prompts in order to create more realistic images or more stylized images, really whatever you want. Well, one of the things I noted is it was really difficult to tell it how to make changes to your model. So in this case, it did a really good job of creating all the context buildings, but I didn't have the ability to remove things like these trees. And it's just really clunky trying to tell it what to remove using most of the current setups. Luckily, there's an extension for Photoshop that allows you to actually circle and work with things in order to tell this to remove stuff using Nano Banana. And so you can download this plugin from astria.ai. I will link to the full link for the plugin in the notes below this video. And so what we want to do is we want to install this plugin for Photoshop that's going to allow us to access Nano Banana directly inside of Photoshop itself. Now, one thing to note about this is if you don't want to do this, um, they have said that probably later on this month that Photoshop should be getting Nano Banana kind of natively. But if you want to use this beforehand, this is a great plugin to do that. So um, you can just go to astria.ai slash nano dash banana dash Photoshop. I'll just link to it in the notes down below so you don't have to click on that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that plugin. Um, and if you watch any of the older tutorials, because this is like changing rapidly, this used to be a Gumroad tool um, from somebody else and it got acquired by Astria.ai because it works with Astria AI. Um, but if you go to the Gumroad page, which is what some other YouTubers are linking to, now it says that the price is like $5,000. That's just to keep you from buying it here. They want you to follow the link that's down below from the Gumroad page. So it's an effective way of saying, yeah, don't buy it here. Just click on this link right here. That's where the new plugin is. But if there's any confusion, that's why there's confusion. And so if you haven't already purchased it, you're going to see this Get Nano Banana plugin for $9. And once you do that, it's going to link you to the download page. So if we click on, for me, it's going to be See My Purchase, but it should just redirect you to this page. So it is a $9 plugin. The other thing to note about this is, um, as with most things, AI, um, you get a little bit of a credit in order to try it out. But there are some kind of costs on the back end that add up to like $0.04 cents per generation or something like that. So it is something to be aware of. Um, that isn't really something we're going to be able to get away from just because the amount of compute required to do all this AI stuff. I mean, there are going to be credit systems and things like that. But once you click on the download plugin, now what that's going to do is that's going to download a CCX file. And so what we want to do is we want to go find that CCX file that it downloaded and you just want to run it. What that's going to do is that's going to pop up your creative cloud right here. And if you click on install, it's going to install it. It's going to um, let you know this is from a third party developer. As with everything from a third party developer, you're kind of using it at your own risk. But since it's from Astria.ai, which is a legitimate website, I'm not really especially worried about it. So once I do this, now it's going to show up inside of Photoshop. So now what we can do is we can hop into Photoshop and we can start using. Okay, and so this is a model that I've downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. It's just the commercial building design underscore two by uh, Nizar Kwafi. Uh, if you want to download it and follow along. But it's just a 3D Warehouse model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a snip of this model. So I'm going to use my snipping tool right here. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring it over into Photoshop. So I'll just drag it over into Photoshop right here. And now I've got this kind of ready to go. Now I probably want to crop the image down a little bit. So in this case, I can just use a layer mask in order to do that. So we'll just add a mask, mask that out. And then I'll just kind of scale this up so that it fits on the page. I'm not going like super crazy with this or anything like that. We're just going to bring this image in. Um, you can see how I even have an image highlight in here. It's fine. Um, but now what we want to do is we want to start generating some different things. Now you can access that plugin by going into plugins and notice how it's going to show up in your list right here. You can also click on your plugins panel and it'll pop that out and this will show up in your plugins right here. And so the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get an API key from Astria AI, right? So getting the API key is free. Um, so you should get like $2 worth of free credits or something like that in order to try this out when you buy that extension. But I'm just going to click on the option for open Astria. 
It's going to ask if I want to do that. I'm going to say yes, allow. And so I believe you can just click the button for login and it's going to just have you log in using your Google account. I believe is how you do that. So you'll just do a sign in with Google and you'll be able to sign in. But now what you want to do is you want to click on the option up here for API. And so you're going to go find this API key right here. So I'm going to go down, copy this API key, and then we're going to hop over into Photoshop and we're going to paste the API key right here, right? So I'm going to click on save. And you can click and drag this to the right in order to dock it to the right hand side of the page so that it's kind of out of the way. And so we'll come back to that other image in a minute. But first off, I want to show you what I would use this for. So I'm going to bring in the image that we worked on last week inside of Nano Nana. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to remove these two trees, which is something I couldn't really do previously in the AI Studio version. But notice how what I can do is I can create a selection around these trees and I can give it instructions and say something like, like remove these two trees. I can click on submit and it's going to go through and it's going to remove those, but it's also going to generate the background in here using nano banana, right? And it remembers things about the building. So it's not going to come in here and do anything crazy. It's going to remove it in a way that really kind of like fills in the blanks right here. So I really like it from that standpoint because I can actually pick areas. So if I was to do like the full workflow, okay, what I would do is I would start by going to aistudio.google.com, which is where we were last week. So I'd bring this building in, I would drop it in and I would prompt it. So make this a photorealistic render of this building. Include shadows. And usually that first prompt doesn't always get me exactly what I want, but that's okay. We're going to do multiple prompts in here. So we're going to say maintain all building detail and geometry make the materials look like photorealistic materials which by the way i've found that this kind of keeps everything as kind of like a sketch style is something that i've run into a bunch like it doesn't go to like full photorealistic and i'm kind of okay with that but if i look at this it maintained the detail of my building but it is kind of a sketch style versus uh, more of like a photorealistic style but then what i would do is i would say okay now add detailed context models or context building models around this building, maintain all building geometry and detail. Okay, so right, right there by itself is super cool. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, now let's add some pedestrians walking on the sidewalks and cars on the road. Now we're gonna say add some clouds in the sky and make this a sunset image while maintaining all model detail. And I don't like what that generated, so we'll say, let's change the time of day back to noon. And so just real quick, I wanna talk about why I'm doing it this way. So. I went to aistudio.google.com because I can create this image and I can use basically, it's not unlimited prompts, but I can use as many prompts as I want to get the building to a starting point, but I don't get charged for credits and generations. So I'm using AI Studio to set the stage for my image and then I'm going to take this image, I'm going to snip it and I'm going to bring it over into Photoshop and I'm going to use the Nano Banana plugin in order to make edits to this image. So now I can go through and I can use the selection functions when I copy paste this in here in order to make changes to specific things. And that is going to cost credits. So um, we're going to do that inside of this tool because this does something which the AI studio version can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and for example, let's say we wanted to remove this tree. So I'm just going to select this tree or a couple of these trees and we're going to type in remove these trees. And we're going to click on submit. And what it's going to do is it's just going to remove those trees, but it's going to keep all the other detail in the back because Nano Banana is actually pretty good at that right there. So it did an awesome job removing the trees. Note that you can toggle that back on and off because what it's doing is it's masking it out and adding a new piece of an image in here just like this. So you can use it to remove things. You could also do something like make this car red while maintaining the make model and detail of the car and we'll click on submit 
Just remember that every change you make using the Astria AI, you're using credits. And so at a certain point, you're going to have to start paying for credits. But notice how this swapped that car out without changing the rest of the model right here. And yes, I'm aware that this is super low resolution. As this is a new technology, I'm expecting that to improve over time. But you could always use an upscaler to fix that. But say you didn't like the brick right here. You would select it. And we're just going to say something like change this building facade from brick to a glass system. We'll click on submit like that. And so notice how it did a pretty good job of that without changing the rest of my model. But then once I'm done with this, if I wanted to, I could take this image and I could export it back into AI Studio, right, and tell it to change the time of day. So say that I made all of the changes and adjustments that I wanted to right here. Well, now I could take this and I could either take a snip of it or I could export it. You could re-upload this in and say, please change this to a night. Render, maintain all geometric detail, and click on run, and it'll change this image to a night render. But again, it maintains the building right here, and all of those changes that we made before are reflected in here. So what I'm using this plugin for is I'm using it to make adjustments to images that I've generated elsewhere. Because of the credit limitation and everything else, I'm using this, which basically gives me fairly unlimited changes, um, depending on the number of tokens that you use and things like that. It, I can make a whole bunch of changes here, drop it into Photoshop, um, adjust specific things using the selection tools, and then drop it back into AI Studio in order to give me a result that I really like. All right, so this is exactly what I was looking for in terms of being able to edit these images. There's a little bit of back and forth right now. I'm interested to see if and when the native Photoshop integration comes in, what that looks like. But for now, I find this to be a very workable workflow and it's not super expensive to use. I mean, you might spend a little bit of money depending on the number of edits that you're doing, but it's not massively expensive. So it makes this a really useful tool for me. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? Are you using it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.